everybody, Mr. Record here, and I wanted to take a look at a question that a student had just asked me about in preparation for his upcoming ACT test. And this is a really, really cool, interesting geometry problem that could really appear on either the SAT or the ACT. Lots of really neat geometric concepts. So let's go ahead and read this. It says, as shown below, two circular pulleys with centers eight inches apart are connected with a tight belt. The belt wraps two-thirds of the way around the larger pulley, which has a radius of five inches, and one-third of the way around the smaller pulley, which has a radius of one inch. What is the exact length of the belt? So basically, what they're, what they're wanting here is, if I can highlight this maybe in, in a yellow color, is the distance that this belt would go all the way around the outer part of this entire figure. So that's what we're going for here. Now, this problem really is divided into two components. The first component will consist of finding the length of the belt as it wraps snugly around both circles. So the, the larger circle I'm going to denote here in purple, and I'm going to kind of uh, describe that in words as the um, belt that's two-thirds around, uh, how about we reword that a little differently, the belt that wraps two-thirds of the way around the five-inch pulley. So in order to find that particular quantity, we're going to rely upon uh, the circumference of a circle, which is given as 2 pi r. That's typically a formula that you're going to be provided with on both the SAT and the ACT. So in this particular instance, I'm going to use my 2 thirds multiplier and then multiply that by 2 pi times the radius 5 in this case, and that would all give me 20 pi over 3. In much the same way here in green, we're going to find length around the smaller pulley. So I'll describe that as the belt that wraps one third of the way around the one inch pulley. And that would be equivalent to uh, in this case, uh, we would use oops, the formula of one third times two pi times a radius of one, which would be two pi over three. And then of course, if I were to add these two quantities together, uh, the result would be 22 pi over three, not the prettiest answer in the world, but uh, nothing can really be simplified from that point on, and we do have a significant part of our answer, perhaps the easiest part. I think it's the second part here that's going to provide a little bit more of a challenge, because now, if I highlight once more in yellow, we are still looking for the length of these two sides. And we can rest assured that those two lengths are the same due to the symmetrical nature of the problem. So if we can find one, we've essentially found uh, them both. Now, what I'm going to do here is um, I'm going to extract another shape from the original shape. And, and that shape that I'm going to extract is going to consist of four sides. It's going to be a four-sided figure. So I'm talking about utilizing the length of the belt, the radius of the small circle, the distance between the two radius or center values, and then the length of the radius of the larger circle or the larger pulley. Whoops. And then if I did this correctly, I should, uh, if all goes well, well, it's all not going all that well, but that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and use uh, two different, uh, I'm going to extract these pieces. I just didn't draw them fast enough. That was the problem. But no worries. I'm going to go ahead and bring that shape over here so that I can kind of work with it, manipulate it a little bit. Now, 
what's happening in this problem that's very important, and I think it's what a lot of students tend to, to disregard on, on questions such as this, is that when we deal with this, this belt length over here, and if I were to maybe even extend that belt length beyond the pulleys, although that's not a significant part of the problem, what we should notice is that there is a point of tangency to the circle. And there is a very important theorem in geometry that says a tangent line drawn to a circle and the radius of that circle will always meet at what kind of an angle? Yep, you guessed it, a right angle. So you've got that relationship happening two times here. So I'm going to draw that over here in our new picture. Okay. Now, it's probably also worth noting that the angle measure of this particular guy is going to be very important. And he's not very difficult to find. Because if you go back to the picture here, and if I were to draw in this other radius, given the fact that I know that I have gone around two-thirds of the way around this five-inch diameter circle, I have swept out an angle measure here that would be two-thirds of the entire angle measure of the circle. And we know that the angle measure of a circle is 360 degrees, and two-thirds of that 360 degrees is 240 degrees, which leaves a 120-degree angle on the other side. And if that angle measure is cut in half, then we can say that we bisect that perfectly, and thus we would have a 60-degree angle here. And that's going to be very significant, because now what I'm going to do is draw in sort of a, a bit of a, a, a hidden line that would connect the lower left-hand or right-hand part of this picture all the way across that would be parallel, and that's very important. I've drawn something that is definitely parallel to the side that I'm trying to find. So if I can, in, in, in essence, find the length of that purple dashed line, I found the length of the line that I want here, which is the exact same as the length of the belt over here. Okay, so now you just have some 30, 60, 90 relationships going on. And there's a variety of ways that you can go about finding the length of that purple dashed line. Um, one way I think it's kind of cool is if you know or rely upon the fact that the length of this radius value here was 5, which if you recall was the entire length of this side here, and the length of this side radius value was 1 from the original picture, we can then subdivide the left part of this quadrilateral into a length 1 to a length 4. The length 4 becomes very important because notice how he is opposite the 30 degree angle, which I haven't measured or marked in, but that's exactly what I've got here, a 30 degree angle. All right, we know that this guy must be a right angle because of two parallel lines cut by a transversal. So then 4 would be the length of the smallest side of the 30, 60, 90, which means that the hypotenuse would be twice the length of 4, which is 8. Well, there's no secret there because this 8 happens to be the length between the two centers. And the original problem, if you recall, going back up here, says that the centers are 8 inches apart. Like I said, that's not so important. What's important now is finding what the heck is the length of this side. Well, we just know that we would take that 4 and multiply it by radical 3, and hence we would then have the length of the purple dash side, which, of course, transfers over to be the length of the uh, blue side here, which is the length of our belt for radical 3. Now, of course, you're going to want to double that to account for the opposite side as well. And if you add 4 radical 3 to itself, you would get 8 radical 3. And that's what you end up adding to your original length. Now, if I recall, this particular problem was multiple choice. And this was one of the correct answers. So that can kind of help you as well in, in doing problems such as this. So anyway, I hope that this uh, helps. It's a really good, rich uh, ACT, SAT question. I wouldn't classify this as necessarily an easy one, but definitely one worth taking a look at. Hope you liked it.